All right. Welcome, you guys, you FaceTimers. We, we welcome you guys in the house of the Lord. We welcome you guys that are here in the house of the Lord. Let's, let's really get excited for God this morning. Let's get really excited. Let's get really excited. Because it says in Hebrews 12, 28, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, that should be exciting right there. We should be shouting already just to hear that. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. There are some things that God has done in your life where you could just give him honor and just have this wonder of like, wow, God, you did this. And this is a God that his kingdom cannot be shaken by no force, no being, no person. So just in that, we should be thankful with the respect and honor for our God and with this wonder of excitement. So as we worship, because worship is actually a gesture towards God, an emotional gesture for what he's done. So this morning, let's have this wonder, this awe, this reverence for God and let's show our God how much he means to us in gesture. Can it be our, a raising of hands, singing of our voices, bowing on our knees before our heavenly father? So let's be excited this morning to worship our God. Let's just not look at this moment as just another moment for 30 minutes to sing to him. Let's really thank him for what he's done. Let's have an honor and a reverence for him. And excitement for what he's done, is doing, and will do to come. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. this morning.
this morning. Come on. Lift it up to the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Splendor of a king Glory Majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. Oh, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? What the world will see. How great is our God? And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. Oh, the Godhead three and one, the Lion Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion. Is our God? Oh, see how great, how great is our God? How great, how great is our God?
bow down and confess you are the Lord in this place we bow down and confess you are the Lord in this place your face that I see in your presence of your life we bow down we bow down we bow down and confess you are the Lord in this place. We bow down and confess you are the Lord in this place. We bow down and confess. You are Lord in this place. We bow down and confess. You are Lord in this place. Love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. And what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I live. My voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what? Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your When I walk through the door, I sense His presence. And I knew this was a place 
where love abounds for the simple the God we love abides here and we are standing in on holy ground we are standing on holy And I stand in awe of you, Jesus. Yes, I stand in awe of you. I am so in love with you. And I stand in all of you, Jesus. And I stand here. or two.
for thou, O Lord. Fill this place with our praise as I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Come on in your own way. Just worship him right now. Tell him that he's exalted. He's worthy today. Come on, just love him and tell him how worthy he is today. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We lift you up, O oh Lord. Worthy, worthy is our God, and we exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many know today he's worthy to be exalted? He's worthy to be exalted. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, would you give him praise this morning for his grace and mercy and goodness? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, thanks, Rick, for being with us today. Amen. Amen. It's so great to have you. Remain standing and turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles 29. So, uh, 1 Chronicles 29, and I'm going to be reading this verse out of the Living Bible. 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 11. It says, uh, Everything in the heavens and earth is yours. O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as being in control of everything. We adore you as being in control of everything. Say this with me. God is in control of everything. Amen. My message today is letting God be God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your word. May they be words of spirit. May they be words of life. Oh, Lord, we're just already so full. We've had such a great time today in Sunday school at nine o'clock and then with worship and now the word. Ah, oh, what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. What a joy it is to be with God's people, not only in the physical place here, but also to be with God's, those of God's people watching today and just enjoying the presence of the Lord. Just so good to be together. Thank you, Lord. We give you all thanks and praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Say it one more time. God is in control, is in control. Of, everything. of everything. You can be seated. Letting God be God. Today I want to look at an aspect of God's character. Probably not real familiar with a lot of people, and that is His sovereignty. Sovereignty. Well, you say, what's sovereignty mean? Sovereign, sovereignty simply means that God is in control of everything. That's what sovereignty means. You see, He created everything by His power, therefore, He is in control of everything, past, present, right now, and future. He is in control 
of our lives. He's in control of our lives. Now, many object to that. Many would object to that and say, hey, I'm, I'm in control of my life. I'm in control. No, no, you just, you just think you are. You just think you're in control, but you're not. God is. It was Job who said in chapter 1, in verse 21, he said, The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What was Job saying? Job was saying, God is in control of everything. That's what he was saying with that statement. Our birth, our life, and our death. Well then, if, if God is in control of everything, do I, do I have a choice, any freedom? Yes, but it's limited. There are boundaries and there are perimeters which we cannot go beyond. You see, those today who say they're free because they just do whatever they want to do. I'm free, man. I'll, I'll just do what I want to do. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm free. I just do what I want to do. In reality, they're less free. Yeah, the, the Bible says God gives you freedom to choose the way you want to live, the way you want to act. But once you make those choices, you're no longer free. Other words, you're not free to choose the consequences. God tells us this, you do certain things and you're going to get certain results. What is the principle? You reap what you sow. We were talking about the difference between deception and truth. That's the truth. You reap what you sow. I want to look at three practical supplies to our lives. And what is the impact upon my life? What's the impact upon my life with God in control? Well, there's three things. There's your plans. There's your problems. And then there's your prayers. First of all, my plans. Because God is in control, my plans are limited. Would you say that with me? My plans are are limited. Come on, don't just mumble, say it. My plans are limited. There is a limitation to our plans. Now, I, I know many don't like to admit that. They say, hey, the sky's the limit. No, the sky isn't the limit. God is the limit. He decides what the limitations are in your and my life. You say, well, how, how do you know? Again, what we were talking about today, there's a lot of things people say, and just because they think it's true doesn't make it true. That's what we learned today in Sunday school, the difference between deception and truth. You're deceived if you start thinking, hey, I'm in control. Hey, I can, I can do that. You're deceived because you're not. You're not. Proverbs 19.21 says, many are the plans in a man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. I mean, no, that's truth. Proverbs 16, 1 says, We make all our plans, but God has the last word. That's, that's the word. That's truth. And I just pray, dear Lord, help us to get that. Help us to get that. God has the last word. Say that with me. God has the last word. Now that can be hard to swallow, I know. Because we want to have control, we just do. We want to have control over our lives. We want to have control over the situation that, we, that we're in now or you know, what we've been in for the last few months. Somehow we want to have control over that and we want to have control over other people. Anybody ever had things not go the way you planned them? Can you say 2020? At best, your plans, my plans are tentative because we can't see ahead. I mean, no, God 
just may have a better idea. Go ahead and make those plans. There's nothing wrong with making plans, but no, they just might change. Come on, we need to be flexible in our plans. What's the wrong attitude? Presumption. Presumption. If we say, I don't need God on this one. I, I, I can figure it out. I, I know what to do. I don't need to pray about it. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> Dear friend, you're assuming it's going the way you planned it to go. How I many know that's a big presumption? How many know life is uncertain? Amen. You better believe it is. James 4, verse 13 through 15. Now listen. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow... We will go to this or that city and we're going we're gonna to spend a year there and we're going to carry on business and we're going to make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this or that. It's all right to make plans. We just need to realize that they're they're tentative. Maturity says my plans are flexible. You know, there are those who make plans and when things change, how many know they freak out? Anybody know anybody like that? It's not working out how I planned it to. They just, they just go crazy, gives them an ulcer. How many know that mature faith is changeable? I make my plans with the realization that God ultimately calls the shots in my life. What's the right attitude? It's cooperation. Other words, I include God in my plans. When I set my plans, I make sure God's a part of those plans. You say, well, how do you do that? I pray. I pray. I'm going to tell you something. Anything without prayer is presumption. And instead of asking God to bless your plans or your plans, how many know you need to ask God to help you to know and to do what He's blessing? What His plan is? You know, I remember a time and some of us who are a little bit aged to remember this. I remember a time when people said quite frequently, the Lord willing. Come on. The Lord willing. I'll come and see you or we'll do this or we'll do that. All of it, the Lord willing. That, beloved, is the right attitude. Proverbs 16, 9 says we should make plans we should make plans counting on God to direct us. See, that's cooperation. So that's my plans. What about my problems? Because God is in control, my problems have a purpose. I know it's going to be hard for you to repeat that. But come on, my problems have a purpose. You guys are mumbling again. Come on, my problems have a purpose. 1 Peter 1, verse 6, this is the Phillips translation. It says, at present, this is good, at present you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. Anybody else feel like you've been harassed by all kinds of trials? This is no accident. Say, what? This is no accident. It happens to prove your faith, which is infinitely more valuable than gold. I'm going to tell you today, life is not a series of random events that have no meaning. 
Do you realize that today? I, I wouldn't, I'd hate to live my life with just case, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. No, life is not a series of random events that have no meaning, not for a child of God. If you're a child of God, nothing, nothing can come into your life without your heavenly Father's permission. Come on. Why? Because God's in control. Those problems, those difficulties you've had or are having today, I've had, are no accident. Are no accident. Now listen carefully. I'm not saying that everything that happens is God's will because it isn't. There are many things that happen in life that are not God's will. How many know sin is not God's will? Someone gets cancer. Well, it must be God's will. Says who? Says who? You see, we pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven because God's will is not always done. So we pray that. Not everything in God's, not everything is God's will, nor does he cause everything. He doesn't cause sin. He doesn't even cause all your problems. How I many know he doesn't have to? How I many do we bring enough on ourselves? Or other people bring enough problems on you? What I'm saying is this. God allows. He permits problems. Then he uses those things for a greater purpose in our lives. Come on, are you with me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many believe God can turn bad things into good? That He can take the bad that the enemy meant for evil and He can turn it around for our good. Do you believe that today? Amen. God can take problems. He can take difficulties and He can turn them around for good. God allowed Paul to go to prison in Philippi. And what happened? The jailer and his whole family came to Christ. He hardened Pharaoh's heart to say no to Moses so that he could show forth his power. He could have kept Jesus from the cross, but he allowed it so that he could demonstrate his resurrection power. Say this with me, because God is in control, my plans have a limit, and my problems have a purpose. If you really believe that, then how should I respond? If I really believe that God is in control, and that my plans have a limit, and my problems, that my problems have a purpose, in that case, then how should I respond? I already mentioned Job. He had it all and he lost it all. Just read about it. Read the book of Job. Now, do you realize, if you've read it, you know this, do you realize that Satan couldn't even get to Job without God's permission? Do you realize that? Satan had to stand in line, get before God and make his accusations, basically saying, hey, he won't serve you. You know, God could have just blown him off. But how I many know that didn't happen? Satan couldn't have touched Job's life without permission. Satan said, can I do this to Job? And God said, you can do this and no more. That's your limit. So how did Job respond when the bottom fell out? I read part of it to you. He said, naked I came into this world and naked I'm going out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can anybody say wow? Wow. Job says it all comes from him anyway. He gave it 
He can take it away because it's his right. But how many know the story doesn't end there? God restored everything double to Job. What about Joseph? Now, here's an example of how to respond when people intentionally hurt you. Now, I know that doesn't apply to anybody here or anybody watching, but, you know, for the person that's not listening, the person's not here. How do you respond to a person that, or someone when people intentionally hurt you? He was dad's favorite son. You all know the story. His brothers didn't like that. Not at all. So they got real jealous. They sold him into slavery and told his father that he had been torn apart and killed by wild beasts. Then Potiphar's wife, she tries to seduce him and he resists and, and she accuses him of rape and he's put in prison to be forgot about. I mean, talk about feeling sorry for yourself, thinking, where's God in all this mess? Of course, you've never said that before, but I just, I, just for the point. Where's God in all this mess? We could even say that today. Where's God in all this mess? What did I do? What did I do to deserve this? Why me? Remember last Sunday when talking about dealing with disappointment and Gideon asking the very same question. Why is this happening to me? But listen, with Joseph and with Gideon, how many think that they were right where God wanted them to be? Now I heard a, a yes and a little nod here and there. <laughs> But you had to think about that one for a minute, didn't you? You know why? Because we don't want to answer that. We don't want to say, yeah, yeah. You know, Joseph in prison and, and forgotten and thrown in there and everybody. Forget. Oh, yeah, that's right where God wants him to be. Yeah, Gideon hiding in the wine press and, and all the other things. Oh, yeah, that's right where God wants him to be. What about you? You don't want to answer that. You don't want to say, yeah, that's right. You know why? Because it means that you've got to look where you're at right now. And if it's not the place that you want to be, it makes us face some hard questions, doesn't it? About where we are. Questions about our faith. Questions about our trust in God. And our attitude. And how we're responding. Now, we all know the end of the story that it turned out real good for Joseph. The question is, how's our story going to turn out? How's your story going to turn out or, or your story that's watching it? How's your story going to turn out? But I'll tell you right now, it all depends on how you respond. It all depends on how you respond. Well, how did Joseph respond? Genesis 50 and verse 20 says, this is Joseph. He said, you intended to harm me. But God. Can you say but God today? But God. You intended to harm me. But God. Intended it. For good. To accomplish. What is now being done. The saving of many lives. Come on. How many know God's got a plan? I mean, no, God's in control. Beloved, listen, the hurt that you may be experiencing right now, the hurt, the pain that you may be experiencing right now from whomever, for whatever, know this. It may have been meant for, for bad, but God will turn it around for your good. Amen. Amen to that. The question is, how am I going to respond? I'll tell you how you're going to respond. You're going to say, I'm going to look past the pain. I'm going to look past the hurt. And I'm going to try and discover God's purpose behind this. Just like with you, Rael, God's totally got a purpose. We may not see it right now, 
God's totally got a purpose for your life through all of that. And even in our own lives, we've got to, instead of, instead of being swallowed up by that, we've got to look beyond the pain. We've got to look beyond the hurt. And we have got to discover what is God's purpose behind this. Certainly some things in life we'll never know. How many are going to have a lot of questions for God when you get to heaven? You think when we get to heaven, there's going to be one of those machines that have numbers and you've got to take that number and get in line. And then the thing up on the wall there has the number. Your number, 2,332,000. That's your number. And the number up there is... 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The number of the thing is 17, and your number's 2 million. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You got all of eternity to wait, anyways, in line. But how many know we're all going to have some questions? All going to have some questions. Things, some things in this life you'll never know. Why, why did this happen? Why, why did that happen? Why is. This happening right now in our nation. I don't know. I don't know. And anybody thinks they do know? The only thing I know is that God is faithful. I know that God's mercies are new every morning. That's what I know. I know that He's faithful. Even when I'm not faithful, He's faithful. But I do know this today too. That God has a plan. And He's a good God. And He's in control. My response is to look past the pain, to look past the hurt and find God's purpose behind the pain, behind the pain. Second Corinthians 4, 16 and 17 says, this is the reason we never lose heart. These troubles, which are temporary, Thank you, Jesus. These troubles, which are temporary, are winning for us a permanent, glorious, and solid reward out of proportion to our pain. He's saying the things we're going through right now are minor compared to the reward that we're going to receive one day. Amen. 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 That's why in the next verse, Paul says this, we don't look. We don't look at the temporary problems we're going through. We keep our eyes on eternal things, the things that really count, that really matter. So come on, your problems today have a purpose. Your plans have a limit. So what about our prayers? Because God is in control, my prayers have an impact. Can you say that? My prayers, say it again, my prayers have an impact. How many believe that? How many believe our prayers make a difference? Come on. They have an impact. We've all thought before, I know I have, and I'm sure you have. Anybody hearing me up there? Yo! And I wonder, am I wasting my time with this? Will God really answer me? And how many know, of course, the enemy is going to be right there saying, why don't you quit wasting your time? What? Why? Who are you kidding anyways? What are you wasting your time with it? Prayer is a bunch of mumbo jumbo. No, it isn't. Because God's in control. Come on. God's in control. And because he's in control, every single prayer has an impact. Every single prayer, come on, has an impact. Every one of them. How many will just shout out, prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Why? You know why it works? Because God has the ability to make them work. God has the ability to make them them work. Why? Because he's sovereign. We can pray 
and it will make an impact. Do you realize that's the basis, dear friends, for every miracle? God's in charge and He can change things. I'm going to believe that today. God can change things. He can heal when the doctor says there's no hope. God can change things. Why do you think we pray for little Jason? Why do you think we've been praying for Rael when she was going through all that? And praying for Donna when you were going through your stuff. Donna Romero. And, and others of you. I mean, every one of you, we could basically, because we prayed for every one of you here. Through you've gone through things. It's because we know that God can change things. The doctor says this. Well, that's the doctor and thank God for doctors. But God's in control. And God can change things. He can change things. That's why we pray. He can deliver when there seems to be no hope. He can deliver. How many know He can save the vilest of sinners like John Newton? who is a slave trader. He was foul. Just a, a foul person, had a black heart. But you know what God put in that heart? That glorious song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. God didn't give that song some sweet old lady. He gave that to a foul sailor who was trading slaves. But God changed him. God can change. How many think there were people praying for John Newton? Prayer changed things. It changed his black heart. Hallelujah. That's an incredible thing. Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do far more than we could ever dare ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Come on. Nothing is too hard for God. Come on. Nothing is too hard for God. Why? Because He's sovereign. He's in control. It may be beyond our control but it's not beyond His. And when we pray, it brings the sovereign almighty God right into the middle of our situation to us. And He says, I can go far beyond what you could ask or even think when you invite me into the situation, into your job, into your marriage. I mean, if you've ever heard the story of Jimmy Evans, Jimmy and Karen Evans, my, oh, my, I mean, it was, it was a mess. But when God truly got in the middle of that thing, he changed it. He changed it. Now, they're touching multiplied millions around the world. Come on. With your children, your health, your relationships. If you will pray, God says, I will respond and work all things out for your good. Now, here's some practical ways to apply this. First of all, your plans. All of us got plans. All of us. Those here, those of you watching, we all got plans. Do they include God? Do they include God, which honestly, uh, which honestly, what describes you? Is it, is it presumption or is it cooperation? You know something? The reason I ask is many Christians, they live their lives as if God is not in control. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, just look at the level of frustration in so many believers today. And in, in they're struggling, having faith and trusting God and believing in the things of God. See, when you're asking God first, what's your will? Give me wisdom. To know your will. If that's what you do first. No matter who you are. Those of you watching. If you'll do that first. If you'll say God. What's your will in this? 
And God, give me wisdom to know your will. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to guarantee you that life for you is going to be much, much smoother and much more satisfying and fulfilling instead of frustrating. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Is that a true statement? Amen. Do you pray about your problems and your plans? Or are you just presumptuous? Second of all, in your problems. Are you looking today for God's purpose in your problems, in what you're going through? Now, that's individually. And all this that's going on, again, I don't know. I'm not, I just don't know what it all means. But how many know we can pray and God will, God will help us to know what's going on? We're going to find out what God's doing. But are you looking for God's purpose in your problems? Or are you sending out invitations to your pity party? Huh? Come on. And listen. Yeah, inst instead of this, uh, like Gideon, or why me? Why me? You need to ask, what do you want me to learn here? Doesn't mean you have to like it. You think you like going through some of those things you go through? The, the, the trials, the difficulties, things you've been dealing with in your life? You can just jump around and go, oh, there you go, there you go. But you know what makes it a whole lot better instead of just sitting around all the time asking, why me? Saying, God, what do you want me to learn here? What is your purpose in this? Because I know you have a purpose. And listen, you may not see it right away. You may not see it right away. It may come later on in life. But right now, God may be testing you. He may be testing you to see if you'll just trust Him without question. No, that's hard to do. To trust Him without question. To trust in His goodness and His graciousness. Trust in His control. And thirdly, your prayers. Here's a basic question. Are you praying? <laughs> Are you praying? You know, again, the, the song that we, that we sung before, and I love it, is, Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything, everything. What don't we understand about everything? Everything to God in prayer. Don't complain. Pray. Don't get angry. Pray. Don't worry. Pray. Don't give up. Pray. Don't quit. Pray. You know, when things seem difficult, and it is difficult right now, I mean, all of us are, are dealing with stuff that's difficult, but you, maybe you and your own, your own situation, you're dealing with some really difficult stuff, maybe in your health or, or in, in your job or wh whatever it may be. But when things seem difficult, declare out loud, God is in control. When you find yourself disappointed because things aren't, Maybe going the way you wanted them. And you say, man, I don't understand. Stop right there and just say out loud, God is in control. When you start to fear and, and feel that fear is wanting to take over, just say, God is in control. Why? Because he's sovereign. He's in control of everything. Make the choice. Make the choice right now and say this. Say, I'm cooperating with God. Come on, say it out loud. I'm cooperating with God. I'm going to trust you in everything. I'm not in control. God is. You see, it's here in this place of understanding that part of God's character, which is His sovereignty, 
is where you will find fulfillment and purpose and satisfaction that all of us long to experience. Don't fight against God. You won't win. Anybody found that out anytime lately? Don't fight with God. You won't win. You just need to say, Lord, I'm ready in every way to cooperate with you and your Holy Spirit. That I might be that man, that I might be that woman that you've called me to be. I want to, I want to close this morning with this. God's not wanting to beat you over the head with his sovereignty today. He's saying to you, this is my way to success, to fulfillment, to joy and purpose and meaning. Cooperate with my plan. We can say these, this really statement or prayer in our hearts. We can say, God, I admit I've made a lot of plans and never consulted you. I've done that. Me, I have. And I paid a real price for it. Trust me. So as I, as I make that statement, if it, re, if, it, if it applies to you, agree with it. But God, I, I've, I admit I've made a lot of plans and never consulted you. I know that's probably why I've had those problems in my life. I was presuming rather than cooperating. But you say today, I want to start planning my life, counting on you to direct me. I realize the problems in my life have a purpose. Do you believe that today? Say that. I realize the problems in my life have a purpose. Doesn't matter whether you caused the problem, the devil caused the problem, or another person caused the problem. How many believe God's big enough that he can use all of them in your life? Listen, always remember, there's nothing you can't learn from it if you'll respond in the correct way. So we need to declare this in our hearts today as well. God, help me to look past the pain. You know, if, if you're experiencing something today, just ask God to help you look past the pain and see the purpose that he's trying to teach you. You need to say, God, I just, I just need to trust you more. And maybe God's trying to get your attention. Maybe God's just trying to get your attention. Some may need to say today, Lord, I want to become a praying person. How many know we all need to be praying people? Huh? We need to be praying people. Say, Lord, I want, I want to commit regularly to pray. And when things are out of my control, I'll turn them over to you. And I, I, for those that are here this morning, but those that may be listening, let me just say, if you've not, if you've not opened your life to Jesus Christ, come on, let's just all say this together for those that may be watching. Let's say it, let's, let's say it out loud and declare it. Jesus, Come into my life and be the Lord, the manager of my life. Help me to find the purpose you have for my life. Jesus, please save my life. Forgive me. Today, I commit myself to you. Amen. Amen. Come on, would you stand with me this morning? How many know we're not talking about religion? We're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's ask God right now. Let's ask the Lord in those areas, whatever it may be today. Let's ask the Lord in those areas to help us to be able to turn those things over to him. Again, our plans and our problems and our prayers. Come on. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today. We thank you, Lord, because you are such a gracious and you are such a good God. And we just give you all thanks, Lord. And we pray today, Lord, as we as we look at these things, God, that we'll we'll let you be God. 
And, and right now, if we need to repent, God, forgive us for not letting you be God in our lives. But Lord, let us help us to be able to trust in you and to put our hope and to put our confidence in you so that we might become the people that you've called us to be. Lord, I just pray, Lord, today for, for everyone's plans. I pray, Lord, for everyone in this room. We all have plans. And God, we've had a lot, we had a lot of plans for 2020. A lot of things didn't work out that way. A lot of those plans were really set aside. But that's okay because, God, you're in control. And you're a sovereign God. But, Lord, there may be some here today, some watching that are, that are really disappointed because their plans didn't work out the way they wanted to. Maybe it was with a job, maybe in a relationship. Uh, God, just so many different things. They had made plans, and Lord, it didn't work out. It didn't work out that way. And for some, it really, it really threw uh, a, a real curve in their lives. It really caused them to have issues because they were just so expecting things to work out a certain way, and they didn't. They made plans, but those plans didn't work out. Lord, I pray today that you'll just help every one of us and those watching today, help us, God, to put our trust in you, to know, God, you've got a plan and a purpose for our lives and to look to you for that. And Father, I pray today for those, and this includes all of us who are dealing with some issues and problems. We all are. But God, I pray today that we, Lord, individually, we as a corporate body, Lord, that we will look beyond the pain, we will look beyond the problems and beyond the difficulties of the present, and God, we will begin to, Lord, give us wisdom to see what you're trying to do in our lives, to see the purpose behind the pain and the hurt and, the, Lord, the things that are happening. Help us to see, God, what you're wanting to do in our lives. Lord God, help us today. And, Lord, we just, we just pray, God, that you'll give every one of us a passion for prayer. Come on, can you just pray that in your own heart right now, that the Lord would give you just a passion for prayer today, that you'll have such a desire to go before him and to pray and to bring everything, not, not doing anything before you bring it before the Lord, before you pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now I just want you to take a moment and, and give the Lord praise for that right now. Come on, let's just give him praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's just lift up our hands before the Lord right now. Let's lift up our hands and just, just thank him for that. Lord, we just thank you for your incredible love. We thank you, Lord, for your incredible faithfulness to us. Father, we just thank you today, God, that you have been so gracious and so good. Lord, that you are so faithful to us. Lord, that you do work all things together for our good. Even though the enemy meant it for evil, Lord, you've been able to turn it around for good. And Lord, I just thank you for that today. I thank you, God, for the promises, that your promises are true. I thank you, Lord, for your word, that your word is true. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you are so gracious and so good. Hallelujah. Amen.